Hey guys, welcome back to another video of uh, the Chef Jeff Hubner YouTube page. Um, today's video is really, really simple. It's just a cream pan sauce, and I'm using two types of tomatoes, those being grape tomatoes and sun-dried tomatoes. And this recipe was influenced by um, my good friend Jessica, who came over one night and we made something very similar to this, but it was infused with uh, THC, and honestly, it was it was one of the best pan sauces that I've had in a long time. Um, so just as a quick walkthrough for this video, the recipe will be in the description as always, and I uh, hope you guys like this content. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just um, dicing up one whole yellow onion. I got about half a pound's worth of grape tomatoes that I just cut in half. I minced up about five or six cloves of garlic, and now I'm just going to run my knife through these sun-dried tomatoes. I picked these sun-dried tomatoes up at BJ's, and they are, I guess, preserved in oil. So what I did was I just took a paper towel and took off some of that excess oil because I did not want this pan sauce to be super, super oily. Now over medium-high heat, we're going to saute these onions down and get everything else working in this recipe. Um, salt and pepper to taste, as always. And um, we're going to add in some garlic now and the sun-dried tomatoes following that. So we're going to continue to work all of our ingredients together and try and break them down as much as possible so they release all their natural flavors. Tomato paste, especially double concentrated tomato paste, is going to allow this to get a real nice uh, tomatoey flavor without having to put in a ton of tomato sauce. Um, I'm putting these cherry tomatoes, I'm sorry, grape tomatoes in um, whole, and I kind of want them to crisp up a little bit before I incorporate the rest of the ingredients. Yeah, you make it in the pan, right? Put the butter in and spread the uh, butter all over. Oh, that's how I do it. You know? yeah. So coming next is a, a four ounce block of cream cheese, and it has to be Philadelphia cream cheese. There's only one type of cream cheese, in my opinion, and that has to be Philadelphia. They, they're not a sponsor or anything like that. I mean, hopefully in a couple of videos or something they will be. Shouts out to Philadelphia cream cheese, but yeah, they're, they're amazing. Their product's always been good. Um, and I'm just letting this melt down into the sauce, and I'm allowing this to help deglaze the bottom of the pan. Come behind that with about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup worth of chicken stock. And then we're going to add in some half and half to really make this a nice cream sauce. And I'd say about a cup to a cup and a half's worth of half and half. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring this to the boil and then simmer it. Don't mind the uh, sawdust version of Parmesan cheese, but I'm, about, I'm throwing about a half cup worth of that into the, uh, the mix and letting that simmer down. And I'm also taking one bag of uh, baby spinach leaves. And I'm gonna let that cook down and those are gonna wilt down nicely and practically become invisible in the sauce. Um, I really like this sauce and aside from the inspiration from my friend Jessica that you know helped me make this the first time around, this is basically a play on um, a Fiorentina sauce that I always used to get when I was um, living in Long Island and you know frequented one of the pizzerias in, on the neighborhood. Um, instead of using regular pasta, I decided to use two boxes of this Banza, Banza, whatever it is, uh, chickpea spaghetti. And uh, honestly, like I really do enjoy the chickpea spaghetti. It's it's it was nice. It, it kind of helped bring this whole dish together, and it, it's just a little bit nutritional you know, compared to eating just straight carbs. Um, as you can see on the box, there is a good amount more of protein fiber and a lot less net carbs in the entire thing. Pasta cooks for about seven minutes until it's al dente, and I'm gonna enjoy a little Bushmills and ginger ale before draining this pasta off. Once that pasta is al dente, we toss it in the sauce, stir to combine, and in a bowl, we have two knobs of butter that is gonna help give this a nice silky finish. Um, this was amazing. One of the best things that I could have really put together last minute in the kitchen. 
And the only thing that I thought could make this better would be like pancetta or guanciale or something super salty. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it so much.